Hello everyone. I am the presenter named Jia Chichen. Today I will present our journal first paper named "Defining Smart Contract Effects on Ethereum." Nowadays, blockchain technology has gained considerable attention from both industry and academia. Smart contract is one of the most promising use of blockchain, which has been widely used in different areas. Thousands of smart contracts can be found on open source platforms like EtherScan or GitHub. However, programming secure smart contracts is not very easy because smart contracts have many new features compared to traditional programs such as mobile apps, such as they are decentralized, self-executed, and code-enforced. Till now, there are many famous attacks happened on Ethereum, like the DAO attack and the, the Parity Multi-Sig Wallet attack, which caused million dollars loss on Ethereum. The aim of our work is to help developer develop a bug-free and well-designed smart contract. To achieve this goal, a common method is detecting and removing software defects. As it help increase software robustness and enhance development efficiency. In software engineering, a contract fix is an error, flaw, or fault in a program that causes it to produce an incorrect or unexpected result or to behave in unintended ways. Software defects are related to not only security issues but also design flaws, which might slow down development. Or increase the risk of bugs or failures in the future. However, since smart contract is a very young technology, and the smart contract has many new features, which makes it very different compared to traditional software. So, traditional defects for、uh, software defects for traditional programs are not suitable for smart contracts. In this case, we need to define contract defects for smart contracts. These are three research questions. In this presentation, I aim to answer three research questions. In RQ1, we first give the definition of contract effects that we found from Stack Overflow posts and the real-world smart contracts. Then we validate the acceptance of these defined contract effects through an online survey in RQ2. In RQ3, we manually label a dataset to give a distribution of the defined contract effects, and then summarize five impacts of each contract effect. To find contract effects, we first download all Stack Overflow posts and use keywords to filter more than 4,000 solicited defects-related posts. The keywords consist of two parts. One part is from solicited document. Another part is the topic words of the posts. In the third step, we use card sorting approach to analyze and categorize the filtered posts. There are two people to take part in the card sorting. We first created one card for each post. The card contains the information of the title, description, and the comments. Then we worked together to determine the labels of each post. There are two iterations of the card sorting. In iteration one, we randomly choose twenty percent of the cards and read the title and the description of the cards to understand what the post discussed. After that, we discuss the root cause of the defects. If the root cause of the card were unclear, we omitted it from our card sort. All of the themes and the contract defects are generated during the sorting. After this iteration, the first five categories shown in the table are founded. In iteration two, two develop uh two people independently categorize the remain uh the remaining eighty percent of the card into the initial classification uh classification schemes by following the same method described in iteration one. During the categorizing process. We found another category named inappropriate standard, which is common in the remaining cards. After that, we compare our results and discuss any difference. Finally, we categorize the defects into six themes with sixteen contract defects. Then we manually label a dataset which contain five hundred and eighty-seven smart contracts. During the labeling process. We found other four contract effects are very popular in our dataset. 
So we finally get 20 country defects. We divided these country defects into five aspects. None of them are security defects, which can lead to security issues. We also define four country defects related to availability. These defects can lead to the potential errors or functional loss for the caller. Three country defects are related to performance. The country defects with these defects can increase their gas cost. Two country defects are related to maintainability. These country defects might shorten the life cycles of the contracts. The other two country defects are related to reusability. These country defects can increase the difficulty of code reuse. Due to the time limitation, I cannot give detailed country defect. Uh, Country defect example. If you want to know the detail of the twenty country defects, you can refer to our paper. Let's come to RQ two. We use our survey to answer the question, uh, uh, research question two. Our survey consists of three parts. In part one, we collect some basic information about developers. In part two, we give our detailed information of each country defect, country defects with six options. The options are from very important to very unimportant, and we give our score from five to one to the first uh, to the first five options. In part three, we give our text box to collect comments, questions, or uh, or concerns. We totally receive one hundred and thirty-eight response and uh, fifty-eight uh, fifty-four comments. The average years of experience in developing smart contracts are about two years. The results of the survey is shown in the figure. In the second row distribution, the leftmost red bar is the number of people who choose very unimportant, and the rightmost green bar is the number of people who choose very important. Almost all the country defect scores are larger than four, and the average score is four point two two. Which means the developers think the country defects are very important and uh, harmful for country defects uh, for smart contracts. We also summarize five impact levels according to the consequence of the contract defects. This table might be clear. Impact level one to impact level three can lead to critical or major unweighted behavior of smart contracts. Impact level four and uh, impact level Five can only lead to travel unweighted behaviors. Critical represent country defects, which can lead to the creation being controlled by attackers or lost all the users. Major represent the country defects can lead to the loss of a part of users. Contract defects with travel severity levels will not affect the normal running of smart contract. Uh, IP1 def defects can be used by attackers to st uh, to store users, but uh, IP2 defects can't. There are two types of IP3. Type 1 defects uh, can lead to critical unweighted behaviors, but uh, the unweighted behaviors cannot be triggered externally. Type 2 defects can lead to major unweighted behaviors. The unweighted behaviors can be triggered by attackers. But they cannot make profits by using the defects. Impact level four defects can lead to potential risk of errors when outside the programs cause the contracts. IP five defects can lead to gas waste and uh, makes the contract hard to be understand and uh, reuse. We manually label our data set and uh, found almost all country defects uh, have, at, have at least one country defects in our data set. Defects belong to impact level 4 and 5 are the most popular one. These country defects will not affect the functionality of the, contract defect, uh, of the smart contract, but it may have unpredictable impacts to the future. The, distribu the distribution may illustrate that the developers focus more on the functionality, but do not focus on the code re reuse or handle unpredictable uh, behaviors caused by attackers. Uh, my presentation is finished. Thank you for your listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a smart contract session. I'm Ignacio Panak, I'm the session chair of this session. 
And the first uh, presentation is defining smart contract defects in Ethereum. The author is Hyachi uh, Chen that is here to answer your possible questions. So please uh, use the chat to ask any questions uh, you would like. So the first question is by Boyan and uh, he's asking is, uh, do you have any tools to de detect the contract defects? Uh, yeah, yes, our another work developed a tool named the Defect Tracker, uh, which uses symbolic execution to detect contract defects. Uh, contract defects, uh, the Defect Tracker tool can detect contract defects through contract batch code without the need of contract source code. Uh, the speed of uh, the speed of, uh, to detect uh, when smart contract is very fast, which only takes about uh, 0 0.1 second. Uh, so if you are interested uh, about the tool, you can search the fact checker in Google Scholar. Uh, the paper was accepted by Jesse this year. Yeah, this is answer for the first question. Okay, there's a recommendation of paper that you can look look uh, afterwards. Yeah. And another question is, if did you really really own your expertise to classify a stakeover flow pods? Uh, so, sorry. Yes, the last question on the chat is, is did you re rely on your expertise to classify a stack overflow post? Uh, uh, which, which question? Yes, you go to the chat, the last one. Oh, OK, you mean the uh, traditional I software? Al uh, you mean your uh, your question? Traditional software are not suitable for smart contracts, which I differentiate. The question is that if you can rely on your expertise to classify a stack overflow uh, post. Uh, oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, we use card sorting to classify stack overflow posts. Uh, you can refer to our paper. Uh, our paper have a uh, detailed uh, steps of how to use card sorting to summarize the trenchy contract effects from step, stack overflow posts. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, you say that traditional software defects are not suitable for smart contracts. But when you identify 20 defects from five actors, Aspects are security, availability, performance, maintainability, and reusability. These aspects are also present and significant in traditional software. Is it really always the case that defects are so different? Is it not possible to identify general design flows that can appear in both traditional software and smart contracts? And what is really specific for the smart contracts? Uh, yeah, it's a very, it's a very long question. Uh, also, we uh, we uh, we identify change defects from aspects, and uh, they are security, availability, performance, maintenance, and reusability. Uh, but they are also uh, smart contract uh, uh, specific. Uh, for example, for security issues, uh, we define some security issues for smart contract. These security issues only appear in smart contract, uh, and it will not appear in uh, in traditional software. And uh, for availability, uh, they are most uh, most related to the guest system. Uh, so, and uh, you know, the guest system are the uh, are the features of smart contract, or uh, and uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, and the traditional software do not contain the guest systems. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so they are very different. Uh, and I think it is hard to identify general design flaws appear in both traditional software and the smart contract because you know there are many differences between uh, between smart country and the traditional software uh, they are smart country are decentralized and the many new features uh, like the guest systems uh, so I think if we can design a general uh, a general design for us uh, it's, it's well which will be a new a new work uh, and uh, yeah yeah uh, all the uh, all the the facts I defend are specific for smart contracts, and uh, their code patterns are. Uh, we have a detailed code examples in our paper. Okay. Yeah. 
We have another question from uh, an attendee that is asking you uh, what countries were the interview people from? And if you notice that uh, there are some differences according to the country uh, from, from the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I, uh, our, uh, we collect the email, uh, uh, email fr uh, from GitHub. Uh, we download all the email address uh, from uh, from GitHub and uh, send them to more than 1,000 developers. And uh, they are from more than 20 or 30 countries. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Another question is, what about using modeling or conceptual modeling to identify and represent the smart contracts defects in a way that is totally independent of the technology? Is it a conceptual modeling connection in your world that could deserve to be explored? I mean, are you thinking in some kind of conceptual models to, to work with your approach? Uh, actually, most of the, uh, actually, we just found some, uh, 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 as, we, as I described before, uh, all the defects are summarized from Stack Overflow posts and uh, it's, uh, uh, and uh, the, Modeling, uh, I think the defects are not based on uh, are based on some heuristics. Uh, heuristics. Uh, two people found uh, like we read our posts, and uh, we found someone uh, someone describe our uh, security issues on smart contract, and uh, we found these security issues are very common in smart contract, and uh, we summarize these as our defects. Yeah. Okay. I have another question for you is what are the contracts defects in smart contracts? Six categories with uh, 16 contract defects identified. How to assess its conceptual completeness? Are your categories and contract defects based on any ontology of defects for smart contracts or are just based on heuristics? Uh, yes. Uh, in our paper, the section three, we have a detailed introduction about the contract defects. Uh, we give the code examples. Uh, we give the code examples and uh, the detailed descriptions. Uh, and uh, if you are interested with the defects, you can uh, you can read the you can read the paper. And uh, the catch. Uh, and I think uh, in my video, I introduce the how to ca uh, catch catch graph them. Uh, we label a data set. Uh, so we read a lot of smart contracts, and uh, we know how people attack them and how the consequence of the smart contract. And uh, based on the consequence, we classify the smart contract into five aspects. And uh, also we give our impact level, uh, we give our impact level for each smart contract. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the, the, contract, uh, the impact level are con uh, with, uh, uh, are considered from three dimensions. Uh, there are contract dimensions, attacker dimensions, and the user dimensions. Uh, the contract dimensions focus on severity level of the uh, contract uh, contract effects. Uh, for example, uh, create, uh, for example, our con uh, the contract effects maybe can lead to creation or being controlled by attackers or lost users. And uh, the attack, uh, attacker dimension focus on the attacker's behavior. Uh, for example, whether the contracts can be controlled by attackers, uh, uh, and uh, the user dimension focuses on external influence of the defects. Uh, this dimension contains three aspects. Uh, for example, the uh, potential errors for caller gateways and uh, make on code and the mist uh, mistake on code reuse. Uh, and uh, based on these dimensions, we we can classify the contract defects. Yeah, and uh, all the contract defects are based on heuristics. Uh, two experts classify the contract defects and uh, uh, and uh, define the uh, and uh, define the contract defects based on code fourteen. Okay, uh, so I think you catchy, but we don't have time for more because the connection is going to be cut. So uh, thank you very much for your presentation and your your answers, and receive a virtual clap for every attendee. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Okay, if any attendee has more questions, you can go to the discussion room to ask directly yeah. with, the, with the author. Okay, yeah, see you, you for the next paper. Yeah, bye bye. See you.